Every coach, every personal trainer knows the following. If you want your clients to succeed, you have to focus on their mind, their psychology. All right, where am I going with this? Check this out. Instead of fighting against something, fight for something. So instead of trying to fight against obesity, fight for health, fight for fitness. It's a much better approach. Psychologically speaking, it feels more empowering. It doesn't feel as restricting and your odds of success go up. So fight for something, not against something. Fight for muscle. Yeah, for, you're yeah. right to party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you went that way. Yeah. It's, <laughs> hey, you know what? This is a kind of like, um, it's a branch off of the whole, like, don't take things out of your diet, add things, right? Yeah. It's It, it, it sounds silly. It sounds silly but it actually works. So instead of like going to the gym and be like, I, I'm going to fight against being fat or I'm going to fight against being weak. It's like try and be something instead of trying to not be something. And psychologically speaking, it feels less restrictive. Mm -hmm. It's more empowering. You have a much clearer vision. And rather than like, for example, if I'm trying, if I'm fighting for health instead of fighting against obesity, I'm more likely to pay attention to signs and signals that either I'm going the right way or the wrong way. It's also yeah, you're holding on to that positive image that you're creating, that vision for where you want to go, as opposed to really focusing on the negative aspect you're trying to eliminate. And I think too, even with like sports, this is a huge thing. Like for somebody, yeah, we use that a golf example all the time, where it's like you have this water hazard, and it's like don't hit in the water, don't hit in the water, <laughs> hit, in the water. And hit in the water. Yeah. Uh, versus like I'm just visualizing myself hitting it beyond, and then like landing on the green, and I'm just like focusing on that aspect. And you do way better with that. There's, there's got to be plenty of of research to support this too. That having look because you're basically your ones pessimistic the other one's optimistic yeah yeah you know one of them's completely one's I, anti, one's I can't well. i shouldn't i'm bad don't the other one is hey go get it you should do this do more of yeah. that like there has to be some research to support that in itself i don't know how i'd look that up but i i, I bet you there is you know speaking of sports um you, oh. you know you guys both oh uh, wow you guys played huh <laughs> what, you <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna lead with a sports stuff let's no, go no, let's no. go it's, well no listen so uh <laughs> this is true and i'd love your guys feedback on this but you know how when you see a team playing and they're ahead and then they stop playing to win, they start to play to not lose. Yeah. It changes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something that coaches have to coach to all the time? It's like, don't just play to not lose. I, I knew this in, um, in martial arts or in wrestling. Like if you're fighting to not get taken down versus trying to take the other guy down, um, it's a different strategy and it's not as successful. It's often more successful. There's still contention with that too. And yeah. I've, I've been on both sides of that with different like coaches and, you know, we'd argue about it, but I, I definitely come from that, from that camp of like, I just, we play to win and we keep playing to win. We're not trying to preserve the win. We're not trying to uh, prevent the loss mm -hmm. uh, for instance. So yeah, because you start getting on the conservative, more conservative side and you're trying to kind of make sure that, um, you know, they don't, uh, get these points and, um, you, you don't make any mistakes. It's like, you're, you're playing not to make mistakes versus like really, um, just going on the aggressive and, and trying to get after it. This is the same thing in business. Mm, this is the same thing too. Point. You're always, you're either always growing or dying. And a lot of times if you are playing to, you know, be conservative, just not lose in business, many times you end up going, you end up going backwards, going backwards mm -hmm. in the opposite direction versus always striving to be growing and building and more and winning. Uh, and I think you see this all the time. You see, this is so common in business where you get a little bit of success, you're winning. You have, now you start to all of a sudden play real tight, play close to the chest. You don't want to make risk anymore. Hey, yeah. we figured this out. But that's the, that's the day that the business starts to die right there. And so yeah. you always got to be get too comfortable. hundred percent. It's always, true. Always be looking yeah. for I that. remember this with clients too. Like the ones that came in that were genuine, right? Because you'll hear this sometimes, not genuine. But someone who's genuine and says, I want to be healthy. Like I want to feel good. I want to move well. Uh, I want better health. They always had better success than someone who came in and said, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be fat anymore. I'm sick of being unattractive sure. or whatever. In fact, I would have to take those people and try to convert them to the first type of person. It's just a different mentality. And that mentality drives not just the decisions that you make in the gym or the decisions you make with your diet, but more importantly, it changes the experience of those decisions. It's the experience of the decisions that you make that determine whether or not it's something that is sustainable, something that you want to keep doing. It's like, you know, um, eating healthy because you can't do a bunch of stuff. I can't enjoy myself. That experience is very different than eating healthy because I want to I actually want to eat these things. I want to chase after good health. It's a complete, even though you may have the exact same diet, the experience is different. And the experience is again, what determines your odds of long-term success. And this is what we all learned independently, not even working with each other. 
as trainers, uh, you know, eight years into our career. It took us a long time to figure this out. Once you did, it was like, I tell you what, the success of my clients, long-term success, you know, doubled and quadrupled just from figuring that out. Today's giveaway on YouTube is Maps Anabolic. In order to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, Maps Strong and Maps Powerlift, two very popular workout programs, both half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Since you went this direction, I know you're going to go this way. I, I had a shout out today, and I know we normally do the shout out towards the end of the show, but I'm going to do it first because I wanted to have some conversation around it with you guys anyways. And I wanted to shout out Dr. Tina. We listened, oh, we listened uh, to an episode uh, on the way up, interview, up yeah. to Truckee. Uh, Dr. Hyman had two doctors on the show. One of them was Dr. Tina. I forgot the guy who she was debating with, but they had a great hour and a half, maybe two hour long. Two hours. Do, yeah, almost two hour long debate about GLP-1s. Mm -hmm. So you're saying flatly that a drug- It's not a drug, it's a peptide and they're overdosing people on it. And that's why they're having terrible side effects. And also don't. when people lose a tremendous amount of weight too fast, they get depressed and suicidal. And uh, both, uh, both intelligent, great arguments, great points. Um, I think made by both. I think for sure, if either you're taking one, you know anybody in your family taking one, or you're just curious and interested about them, um, I thought it was a very well balanced. I thought uh, Dr. Hyman did a really good job too of not really, you know, taking one side or feeling like he was biased. It was a really good conversation, and man, I instantly fell in love with Dr. I'm, I'm Tina. We didn't know about her before. Me right? too. She's amazing. Yeah, and uh, you know, one of the things that she said that this is what led me to this conversation. Um, was when she was talking about with clients uh, nutritionally. And that, she said the same thing. Yeah, the same thing that we've been talking about for a really long time that you don't tell those clients they can't. And for, then the way I think she presented it a little bit different than how I've presented it in the past, which is that, you know, you have these people that have these crazy ad addictive behaviors to these foods. And it's like taking a drug addict and just ripping it away from them, saying, no, you can't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. It, like the the repercussions of that and the likelihood that they're going to stick to that versus not necessarily telling them you can't have those things anymore, but hey, this is what I want you to do. Go focus on this and go get that and go do add this to your diet. And then eventually that, that'll that start to happen naturally versus telling them they can't. Yeah, have you're told, being told you can't. There's a, there's a rebellious spirit in all of us. And even if you oblige and follow along, you can't help but feel controlled and restricted. I'm glad you said that yeah. even if you oblige, because I know I've I've shared this before and people will still push back sometimes. It's like, oh no, I'm fine. I, I do better if I just cut cold turkey. And I always try and tell them like, hey, that's great that you, ha you have that strength or you believe that you have that discipline. But I'm telling you, this is still a better strategy. Even if you have that, yeah. that, that mental strength to decide I'm on a diet now, I cut all these things out. I promise that even that person that believes that will have better success still doing it this more slow, gradual. I still do it this way. I have incredible discipline when it comes around nutrition and dieting, obviously, right? But I still play this game of yep. when I first get started. I don't tell myself, you can't have these things. I start to add things in the diet, and it's it's a much well, better- Well, I was having a conversation similar, um, and it was about like- so my father-in-law and also we were talking about Kevin James, I think. Uh, I think, you know, he's like the stand-up comedian. But like, right. he'll go through seasons of like being really big and then slimming way down. He has yeah. a discipline to really slim way down, but then, you know, gets real big again. And it's just this constant sort of yo-yoing effect. And, uh, you know, in terms of like that, that, that being the strength, I see people having discipline a lot of times where they can do that and they can be really like focused and like I'm in the zone and I'm getting this done. But then- you know, this actually is uh, something that leads to even more unhealthy uh, reactions in your body. And like that, uh, you talked about the the extra like fat cells that we acquire yeah. after going through these extremes, yep. uh, and you're just setting yourself up for longer term failure uh, by by going Here. on these like shifts and these swings. I'll so use an extreme example. Imagine you had a person who drank a glass of wine every night, so that's seven glasses of wine a week. Now imagine you have a person who doesn't drink any wine but Saturday night drinks seven glasses of wine. Uh, different physiological response. It's not, one is healthier than the other one. Right. And then psychologically, what are we dealing with when someone goes no wine and then one night hammers seven glasses, right? right? So when your approach with food is that extreme, um, you know, there's something you gotta look at, uh, at, at the root. Like what's happening here? Now that doesn't mean you can't swing back and forth. That's just seasons, that's how it works. And 
I get that, you know, there's holidays and stuff like that. But when it goes so extreme one to the other, it's probably because you're going, you're, 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 you're going from, I'm going to tyrannize myself to I'm rebelling against myself to I'm tyrannizing myself to I'm rebelling against myself. That's what it looks like. I also have another way to sell it to the audience that still isn't, you know, bought into the, you know, slow, gradual adding these things. There's also a lot of value in as you start to add these behaviors in, right? So there's there's two ways we're talk, we're describing right now. Either the way where you're like, hey, I'm going to go on this diet and boom, you start walking, you start exercising, you start focusing on your sleep, you start getting, you start dieting, you get cut out all the junk, you, like you, you do it all, right? Right out the right. gates versus, hey, let's just first start working out one time a week or hey, let's just first start to add protein to make sure you hit your protein targets. Why I like that also that's so beneficial is we always talk about one of the biggest things as trainers was getting your clients to uh, attach them to all the other positive benefits of being healthy, right? Yeah. And each one of these steps that you would take if you were to do it slow and gradual is a step in the healthier direction. And you can start to notice like what things really move the needle for you. Like for some people, some clients, I get them to adjust sleep and oh my God, it's to change yeah. their life. And then some people it's like, oh, they were already getting pretty sleep. So it wasn't right. a big factor. But then I tell someone, hey, just walking after every meal. And they're like, you know what's crazy, Adam? I can't believe how much better I feel just from walking for 10 yeah. minutes after each meal because maybe they had some digestive issues or something, right? They, they weren't mm -hmm. active at all. And so they noticed. So what I love about taking these, these, all these different health variables that we would start to do over the course of a, someone's journey and doing them one at a time is you, you can start to attach, like it's easier to attach with me because obviously if you go from eating like shit, doing nothing, and then also you do all of it, you're going to feel better. Yeah. Right. But what made you feel the most better? Was it sleeping yeah. more and how do you know you're doing them all right maybe one you're doing wrong but you made up the difference because right. some other ones are yeah 100 100 percent. it's funny you brought up walking after eating we were on the phone with dr seeds this weekend and he literally said uh, you know and I, I think part of it's true part of it's he's he just be exaggerating but he said if we could just get everybody to walk for 10 to 15 minutes after meals we would we would cure type 2 diabetes that's yeah. crazy that's how much of an impact it, i mean it, actually if you look at the data it actually is it's phenomenal yeah. On, on what it does it for definitely make a massive impact. well there's a there's a couple of things that that's going on there right because obviously the, they're stepping and moving calorie burn that's not the big one it's no. like then there's also the digestive parts and then there's also insulin sensitivity yeah. right yeah yep. so you have like a three-pronged thing that's going on there by simply taking somebody who is diabetic and disciplining them to do that one thing how much it, it, well, it your improves blood, your blood sugar goes up because the food that you just say but contracting relaxing muscles is soaking up and sucking up that in in, in the in glycogen so it's literally bringing the blood sugar out or, or the sugar out of your blood into your muscles and yeah. it's right after you eat so and the data on that is pretty clear it's so easy too 10 minutes after eating i think you know it's funny mm -hmm. some of the healthiest cultures do that uh, naturally you know yeah. that if you pay attention to some of the old cultures where they, they there's a practice of of going for a stroll especially after dinner after the large meal of the day by the way this was something i when i was competing i used to do this but uh, with trigger sessions oh, so yeah. also great to do that right because to your point of just sending i would blood, say even better yeah just man you really want if maybe you don't have uh maybe it's raining outside you don't want to go out for a walk or you don't have access to a treadmill and you're gonna walk in these little circles do inside your house and band so yeah grab, right. carry bands with you and after those meals you know whether you're in a desk job in an office or like that you just have your lunch and run after that get a little 10 minute trigger session real mm -hmm. quick and you'll get, you'll reap the similar benefits mm -hmm. as the person who would get for their 10, 15 minute walk. Yeah. I got to tell you guys about my, uh, <laughs> my, my toddler, my three-year-old, this kid's a handful sometimes. And he's, <laughs> sometimes he's, oh, he's, <laughs> more often than he's not. Hilarious. He's hilarious. Like. Really, he's really smart, really good with language, like super good with language. And he's, he knows how to bullshit really well in, in just hilarious ways. So <laughs> his, him and his sister, he loves his baby sister, but then obviously sometimes she takes a shit or he just, you know, wants full attention. So he'll be, you know, like a three-year-old. So Jess goes into the room and she hears him, I guess Dahlia, she's my one-year-old, took a toy or something or was playing like too close to him or something. And he goes, I'm going to punch you in the face, Dahlia. So Jessica goes, what did you say? And he goes, I didn't say anything. I'm just singing a song. And he goes, I'm going to punch Dahlia in the face. <laughs> no, he I'm did. I swear to God, bro. Oh my he starts God. Singing to he starts singing a song, bro. He's going to punch Bro, where does he? Face. Okay, wow. so he, you guys have him. <laughs> next level. You guys have him homeschooled, so he's not getting influenced by other toddler kids. No. At a, where is he getting this? Know, he doesn't watch a bunch of TV. <laughs> no. He's not as a bunch of other no. like older toddlers that are teaching him no. bad things. Because I do, like, there's a different, like, you know, uh, I remember when, um, when Max started saying, 
you know, poopy face, poopy everything, oh, yeah. because he picked it up from another older kid. Some older kid was <sighs> saying stuff like that. I don't know so where that, he got that from. I mean, him and I, I tell him stories all the time of like good guys, bad guys, monsters punching him in the face. We play like that all the time. Oh, interesting. So, but I, I do know. They get say, it from somewhere. I will say this though: every little piece of bad you language just that got he's, that energy. Well, man. Every little piece of bad language that he spews out is just from his mom. You know that, Jessica. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> oh yeah. The other day he's like, oh. We, we, like, we, we do a timer, right? So he'll watch TV and I'll say, okay, you got five minutes, right? And then the timer goes off and we turn the TV off immediately because otherwise it turns into like, one more minute, one more this. And so we learn now, timer goes timer. off, we just did yeah, it. Yeah. And then he gets mad, right? So I hit the timer off. He goes, he goes oh, you just, you're really going to piss me off. And I'm like, what did you say, bro? <laughs> I can see my wife like, uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know where he got that. Like, yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. talk like that. We were just with my, my best, my best friend and their kids too. And his wife, she's, uh, she's like that. She's got like, she's definitely the one of the two of them that has more of the temper and stuff like yeah. that. And so the kids, you hear them say stuff like that. And then Justin, my best friend will look over, just look at his wife. Yeah. Cause it's just like, you know, that's coming from like, you, hon, mm, right there. That's you. Yeah, that, sounds that, familiar. Yeah. That's him for like, yeah, yeah. they're great, bro. They're, oh. Toddlers are great they're like they're just they're not as bad as teenagers but they're a good time teenagers yeah. are the worst though, I'll tell you. so i i i'm 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 like praying right now right that this this happens like so my, my buddy my buddy who is got the kid who's uh my godson who's a year older than max and they're like the best of friends and everything like that i told you that his son when they facetime each other it's yes friend, yeah, right? yeah 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 and so but he's got the, the you know the which is funny too because he's short his wife is short he's gonna have this like short kid for sure like but he's gonna be an athlete he does everything he plays football he plays baseball he plays basketball he plays soccer he does everything and he's he's crazy he's like all over the place he's loud throw things you know very aurelius like at yeah. home so but then that's like i tell you that's the benefit right he's sports are great for them yeah. because they want to get out and rough and tumble and kick so we go to his his soccer game and uh, you know he's getting ready, and I'm like Hunter, how many how many goals are you gonna score? Five. When well, you gonna score five goals, really, <laughs> wow. bro? I and I maybe because my best friend is so used to it, and he's so overwhelmed with all sorts of. His, his kid scored six goals. Oh wow! Yeah, dude. which the next kid, Seated no other kid goal. scored more than one. Like I'm like, bro, you know you have like a prodigy here, right? <laughs> he's like, uh, he kind of rolls. Awesome. Yeah, he like rolls his eyes. Like, come on, bro, they're not even like, playing. Role. I'm like, uh, bro, you can yeah. totally see like he's yeah, dominating he that early. Yeah. Yes, uh, like already now, and he'd been kept. He kept telling me like, oh, we got to get Max to come play basketball and do this. I say, no, nah, bro, you could try all you want. I said, but that's not how my son works. I'm like, he'll tell you if he wants to do something. And if yeah. you, and if you ask him, he's more likely not to do it. Yeah. yeah. So of you course, let him make his own yeah. Yeah. So I've already learned that, but it was so great. We were watching him play soccer and, uh, you know, Max, we kind of got bored just sitting there watching it. So then he kind of went off to the side and, you know, he, he went over to one of the soccer balls and like started to kick it. And I started kicking. And you're trying not to say anything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to be all cool. Like no big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, eh, just kind of tap it. <laughs> but then he starts playing and he's getting all into it. And he's like, oh my God, can we practice this at home, dad? Yes, absolutely. Dad freaking orders the yeah, goal. You, you got a goal. I know, bro. It's coming. It's already coming. You know, so, yeah. It gets here today. You know what I'm saying? So it gets here today. So I'm like, okay, we've been here before where he's like, he wanted, like, he wanted, remember that time I told you guys about the baseball and like he had this knack, he had to hit it. And then since then, no, it's forgot about yeah. It. Wow. So again, I got the, the soccer ball and the goal and it's like on its way, it gets here today. And, and I'm Kids hoping. Are interesting, man. They're, they're, yeah, interesting. My, my youngest is, I actually, it was, it was cool. We talked to um, their gymnastic coach. I told you guys, he's like over it now. He's yeah. like completely like his head's not even there or whatever. Uh, and uh, he's his a coach chick now, dude. That's his thing. Yeah. His, his coach yeah. like, like was talking to Courtney um, and was like, basically like, you understand that like, he's really good at this, you know? And like, he's like, has all the signs of like being like somebody I could bring up and go to the Olympics and do all this oh, stuff. Wow. And like, he's like, you understand he's like really good at this. And, and it's like, yeah, but uh, this is Everett. He doesn't want to do it, Everett. Oh, this is Everett. I thought you were talking about Ethan. And so that's the thing. It's like it. That's the conundrum because it's like, yes, he 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 is just naturally good at, uh, especially one of the events. A lot of boys aren't good at like the tumbling part where they do the handspring thing, yeah. and it, it just gets to the point where like guys' physiology and all that just doesn't do well. But he has like really. Uh, like sort of the the perfect build for it, and is just really explosive. Yeah. Uh, and so he was like trying to, his last pitch to like you know try and, and and pitch him to stay, and it was just not gonna happen. But I respect it. Like you know, he was like really like putting his last bit out there. Like, come on, like you know, maybe you guys can influence him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm already like you're deep down. You're oh, like yeah. You're like I'm ready. I to can't move wait him to see it. if he can do something somewhere else. <laughs> 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 you know, I feel a little bad. You uh, know, but at the yeah, same time, it's it's such a 
balancing act. I have uh, my my brother in law was a phenom at soccer when he was a kid, and his dad was excellent soccer player. But his yeah. dad grew up poor, so he didn't get a chance to really play super high levels. But he was like a little phenom. But his dad was so overbearing yeah, on him yeah. that it made him stop and yeah. not want to play anymore. Now as an adult, if you ask him about it, he's like, man, I wish my dad wasn't like that because I would have kept playing. He yeah, goes, yeah. but the reason why I stopped was my dad would get so mad in games when I would mess up and he would make it such this high pressure things I didn't want to do anymore. It's such a fine dance as a, as a, as a dad. I'm like how I like how to react yeah. around it because you also want to show- Depends on the kid too. Yeah, you want to show interest and excitement too, but then you also don't want him to only do it because he wants to make his dad happy, yeah, right? Yeah. So I have that too. Like my son knows how much totally. I love basketball. So I also don't want him to play just because he knows that makes yeah. dad happy. And so it's like this, you know, I want to be excited. I want to, I want to be supportive. I want to do whatever you want to do, but then also at the same time- Bro, wanna... they, they know. So my daughter- I my, know. They, 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 they know my one and a half year old. I didn't know no, she didn't do this in front of she only does this in front of me she comes up to me because she's now she's walking so she's walking all over the house she picks up she picks heavy things up and she looks at me and she grunts she goes Ugh, and she picks it up and walks around <laughs> and i'm like i'm taking videos of it and i'm saying to jessica she goes she doesn't do that around me i'm like oh the, she she, just she knows you. Yeah. i don't I, I think i don't let her know so i was but gonna, she must know okay so i was gonna ask you this oh, yeah, i meant to ask you, you this because i thought about it after the fact when you brought up aurelius doing the push-ups yeah so and this has got to be interesting for you to think about this because it's very similar to, uh, I mean, your passion for working out is arguably similar to like maybe mine with basketball, right? And so you got to think too that there's a part of you that totally wants him to adopt it, but then you also don't want him to no. obsess about yes. it. And I don't want him to develop body images. Right, right. right. And yeah. so did you think about, are you like, because there's obviously a part of you like, yeah, my son's so doing it. But then the, the part of you is like, okay, do I really want so him to So Jessica be and I sat down with this and talked about it because I'm like, I am very careful. I don't talk about anything, but you know what I do? And I don't even work out at home anymore, but you know what I do? First of all, other people make comments about his dad. So that's part of it. The other yeah. part of it is I tell him stories and he loves my storytelling. He loves it. If I want to get him to pay attention, yeah. I got to tell him a story. And all my stories have a similar theme. It's always like <laughs> some like monster, Strong, some dude. Strong, yeah. That, like, super jacked up. All, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that beats One everybody. Punch and, yeah. explodes. and you know, yeah. that's wow, funny. That's good, that's good. That's good awareness. This. So I'm like, it's the stories. Yeah. It's gotta be the stories. So I mean, and do you intentionally change them a bit? Do you I'm, intention I'm trying to now. It's right. just not exciting, bro. Why would you want to listen to a story? <laughs> you know what I mean? What am I gonna tell a story about? Like uh, they're exciting story. Like last night I told a story about Godzilla teaming up, teaming up with King Kong to fight all these. And he's like, oh, are they that strong? So like, I tell, I'm catching myself. I'm so like, I tell adventure stories, right? So when I tell, because Max is the same way too, like it's story, like they, that's the, get him to sit still. Daddy, I'll tell you a story. Okay. Yeah. You know, so what are there. your stories? Like so, my, so no, like adventure. So like he's, you know, he's got this, he's a, a kid who gets a, a red magic balloon and the red magic balloon takes him anywhere in the world. And so the, he asks, his dad asks him, where do you want to go, Maximus? Oh, Maximus says, well, take me to the giant waterfalls. And okay. then, so I, I think so of like- your story. Yeah, the story is like, the, the and the balloon can take him anywhere he wants to go. And then I get engage him with by like, what do you want to see? What would be cool, dragons? Or do you want to see, like, so I get things that he's interested in or- now How does the story end? He just sees stuff? <laughs> where's all the action man? yeah I, I like where's the I, romance yeah, I like, mean, my <laughs> stories always end yeah the good guy wins i don't always you know I mean? yeah i don't always <laughs> the good guy wins. He explodes the bad guys yeah, That's my, yeah. i get i guess my like sometimes he just he just yeah. gets to Dude, go i get the chills mine always stories. ends with ninjas <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I, say, I do i get the chills ninjas stuff. come in and just I, that might be a everybody. sign there's a problem there bro yeah, i think that's what it yeah, is yeah, dude. i think that's what it is now that i'm talking about it because i do as i'm telling the story i'm getting the chills you know what i mean like oh and then he was down he's like chills he beat he beat him like no then his friend came and charged him up so my stories normally end with him going to bed in the story so it's like, uh, like in, oh, that's brilliant. And then he, Adam. yeah, and then he's like, and then he rests his head because tomorrow is going to be a new adventure. Oh, that's a great yeah. So story. it's like I always try and bring it back to sleep. It's like a quest. Sleeping yeah. is what, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Going to bed and then tomorrow gets to do whatever. So no, and then I'll tell him like, hey, when you sleep tonight, dream of all the places you want to yeah. go or the things you want to do. Right. So something oh, like that. That's smart. And I do different stuff. Like, all right, I'll like, try that. It's a boat. Yeah. It's a magical bike. It's like it's yeah. always hey, next these time I see your treasure kid, hunt or something. Next time yeah. we see each other, I'll tell Max. Yeah, you tell a really yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll switch up our story. Hey, speaking of, dude, funny. you guys, I tell you what, man, sometimes the comments, so here's what so sucks about social media. There's a lot of things that suck about it. But sometimes the comments are just so mean, you know, that you're just like, wow. You bro, saw like, a mean one? Yeah, uh, dude. So uh, there was, so I was on um, Drew Puritt's podcast a couple times 
great interviewer, great podcast. That's a doctor, right? Yeah. yeah and uh, No, he's not. I don't think he's a doctor. Is I he? thought he was a doctor. I don't know. Maybe look him up. I anyway, think he is. I think he is. Really smart guy. And uh, my episodes did really well with him. And, and one of them popped up. And sometimes I like to check the comments for feedback. Like, mm-hmm. okay, what did his audience think or whatever? And 99% of them were really good. People said really nice things. And then, and that's why I'm at, I'm, I'm advocating for, you know, different behaviors and mm-hmm. uh, ways of being more fit and healthy and, you know, yeah, what's yeah. true, what's not true, that kind yeah, of stuff, yeah. right? So someone puts a comment underneath and goes, I'm not going to take health advice from a guy in his mid forties who looks like he's in his mid fifties. I'm like, what? wow, bro. Wow. Wow. wow really? Yeah. I, I, I read it. I sent it to Jessica. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Isn't it always, yeah, it's always some physical characteristic. They just like, Bzzz. bro, I read that. They, like, they wow, get that was, I la- actually laughed. Hey, it was that's so funny. Yeah. 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 You know yeah, I, I like cal- good ones. I got, I got someone caldera- gives me a good jab. I like it. Hey, I went to the bathroom, yeah. got my caldera. Lathering extra hard. I've been slacking. Oh yeah. I rubbed it all over. I come out of the bathroom. She's like, you put too much. It's uh, easy, uh, like I got to go backwards, dude. Uh, it can't be. I'm like, Hey, the good news is I look good for my mid fifties. If that's, yeah. that's oh my. funny. Oh dude. Yeah. Like, so I was thinking about that for tattoos because tattoos, uh, fade over oh, time. Yeah. Right. And, and I was like, and I saw all these like commercials for some products that are like trying to get in on that market. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why not just put Caldera on it? Oh. So I started doing that and like started like seeing, and it's like, you can bring the ink. It, it starts well, to be a little more visible. Really? Again. Yeah. Dude. You oh. should use the SPF one for that. Yeah. Cause that's what one of the things that you to take care of a, t- a tattoo sun, yeah, is. Yeah. So is to fade. keep, yeah. So it doesn't fade from the sun and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, so smart. putting the, 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 which is, I know it's a, for your face. So if it's for your face, you can absolutely put it on your arms and wherever else you have tattoos. So oh. yeah, I didn't even think about it. I was just like, that's just, that's, we've got extra too. Cause I, I gave Doug mine. I have another one in here. I think in here that I haven't opened up and used cause I actually don't use the SPF one that often, but the other stuff is like, I daily. might get mine removed. No. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Your tattoo yeah. removed? Uh-huh. Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. Um, the you don't even see it. It's on your back. It's on your low back. It's, low back. <laughs> it's on my upper back. You guys don't do it. Only when your underwear so falls down a little bit, can we it's see it? It's not a big deal. Look at my low back like that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, I might. I might actually get it removed. I don't know. Really? Yeah, I don't know if I. I don't know. It's, it, it doesn't have a lot of meaning to me anymore. It, You're still uh, Italian. Yeah. Well, I mean, I am, but that's not. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I thought oh. about it the other day. Oh. Although I heard, it, I heard removing them it hurts way more than putting them I, on. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So does it I've look those shitty too when they remove them? Yeah. Well, maybe. I'll, is it easier to cover it or remove it and that's then put usually, a new one yeah. over? Oh, a you cover. People do a cover job would be way easier. Really? Easier. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Because that's not that Because you're only about this big, right? No, it's bigger than that. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's like it's like that big. Oh wow! It's yeah. that big. Uh huh. It's that big. It's like this, like that. Yeah. I think so. No, I haven't no, seen no. it. I don't know. I think, I, think you, yeah, I think you exaggerate with size. Yeah. You exagger- it's not this small, exa- bro. Hey, bro. It's, it's like, like that. It's like this big. No, it's not. Dude. It's like <laughs> that. We'll look at it later. He's like, it's like this, bro. No, it's like no, this. No. My back's not even that wide. <laughs> to be that big. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Hey, you uh, brought up GLP ones. I got it. I, oh yeah. I, got I made stuff, a call. I got stuff to share too. Oh, you do. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Do your thing. This is already happening. I think. I don't know if I said this on the show. But I know we talked about this uh, off air um, between each other. And I talked about how the market, pharmaceutical market, how it's going to um, maneuver around GOP, GLP-1. To like keep muscle preservation, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. So tons of R&D now going into this receptor. Tons of R&D going into uh, peptides and pharmaceuticals that act in this way because they're finding it very effective for weight loss. The side effect, of course, being muscle loss. Because again, if you just stop eating or you eat less and you don't lift weights, you don't bump your protein. Your body adapts by paring muscle down, and that'll happen with a GLP-1 or without. It doesn't matter if you just cut your calories. And so we had talked, and I had speculated that these pharmaceutical companies, how do they always fix a side effect of another pharmaceutical? Yeah, with another one. Yeah. With another, add, so they are, spending, they are spending tons of muscle, uh, excuse me, money. tons of money into uh, substances, <laughs> peptides, and um, in particular pharmaceuticals that will counteract the muscle loss effects. In particular- I mean, selfishly, I'm really interested to hear what they do. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're about to see the world of, uh, of uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs explode. I was gonna say, it's like, it'd be like some kind of steroid, right? Uh, no, so they looked at, testosterone was always on the, on the uh, you know- I mean, anything about. that would come close to- Myostatin inhibitors, that's any, where they're going hard. Any, ooh, ooh yeah. that's kind of scary. Really? Yeah, myostatin inhibitors are really, really where they're really looking. Really, mm-hmm. really. I mean, yeah. anything that, that, could, that hangs with uh, testosterone itself or growth hormone is gonna be incredible. If they, yep. can, if they can mirror anything close to those results, I mean, I, I definitely attribute that obviously to a lot of why I think I held on to a lot of muscle yep. aside from the fact that I had a lot to go from and lose. So I was okay. But then I, th- I, I think 
that there's no way I could have been this low calorie, low protein for this long and still sustained as much muscle as I did. But I, you know, a lot of, since the last updates, a lot of cool things I've noticed since then. Um, first of all, I wanted to ask you something too. One of the side effects that you hear people say, like the, the one of the negative things is, uh, uh, um, uh, Di- digestible distress or um, yeah, digestive distress. Yeah. Digestive yeah, distress. Yeah, Cause it slows down. Okay. Like, so, empty. okay. So that's a broad statement. Define that to me. Some people, diarrhea, constipation. Will have okay. So people. here's, here, I have something to say about that. And because these are all self-reported things of people, right? This is yeah. what people say. Yeah. Uh, and people have asked me that. How's yours? But I just, I've said, Oh, it's been, it's been great. It's been normal. It's been fine. You want to know when it's not when I eat shit. Oh, yeah. So I've now been able to, so the appetites come back, not, roaring nowhere near what it was before, but it's now come back to where I comfortably can eat three, three, four meals a day now okay. comfortably. Right. The Cause it crushed your appetite at first. Oh yeah. Just it crushed. smashed it. Crushed. So That's what happened to my wife. now, now it's, now it's come back. Right. And the only time that I had noticed any of that stuff digestive is when I actually don't eat really clean. So personally, I like it mm. because I've already started to dabble like, oh, let me try eating those mm. tacos we ate out. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm on the toilet right after that oh, wow. for sure and feel messed up and have a little bit of nausea. But if I eat- Now, I wonder if it's the GLP-1 or it's just because you had gone without eating a lot. Like, you, you ever done that before? So that so that's the, my oh, exact point oh. of bringing this up, Sal. Is like, I wonder if what a lot of these people are experiencing is their appetite gets crushed. They don't eat hardly anything. Then they start to eat again. Then they start to, oh, because of their bad habits and behavior. Mm-hmm. So to inter- reintroduce these foods, they probably shouldn't. And then their body- lets them know right away and then they're like oh man these glp ones they just too much distress on my digestive system well i've heard too like with the constipation thing a lot of um a lot of it was just like lack, of lack of fiber well the fiber but also water like yes, really yes. dehydrated yeah, okay so it also is for some people crushes you gotta take the, like an excess yes, of amount of water it, it so, actually crushes not just your appetite but some people don't want to drink yeah this was jessica jessica's okay. like you, you need, need to water talk about to, this she goes yeah, not only do i move. not want to eat I don't want to drink water. Yeah. And so she's having to That's consciously. I, I told you too, yeah. the, the other game changer thing for me was two packets of element tea every day. Like that just has to become so like- So Dr. A, Tina, I think recommended what? Three grams? Four to six oh, grams. Four to six, four to six grams of sodium a day. GLP-1. Yes. Uh-huh. So that's a yeah, lot. That's significant. And, and so that that has become another like staple and that's made it. So I actually feel really good now. My workouts have been really good. Actually strength is now coming. Now you kept it at the same intro dose. Yes. Okay. I've stayed the same. I just took a dose. So I microdosed it uh, after talking to her. And uh, I have no appetite effects whatsoever. But the reason why I'm microdosing it is. You're one fifth. I did one fifth of the starting dose, which was already a quarter. So that's a total like. Yeah. So, and I'm going to, I might bump it up a little bit, but I don't want to, I'm not trying to eat less. I'm trying to uh, look out for any of the other potential benefits, anti inflammatory effects of the brain, the. Um, enhanced ability, the neuroplasticity that they think may yeah. be enhanced, your ability to change your behaviors. Uh, but this is all speculation. So I re- so keep everybody posted. personally, I really am finding this, and I, I and I like this. I'm sure this is probably people don't, other people don't like this. Like if you choose, if you choose to do this, just as a shortcut to try and get yourself to restrict mad calories, that's no different than somebody who just fasts to lose weight, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Like I'm really, I'm one, I'm trying to go through it and feel what I know. But what I, I'm actually enjoy, I like the fact that, oh, wow, look at this. If I eat outside these whole foods or if I have a meal, it's too big. So I've even messed with this now. So because the appetites come back, I've had a couple meals where I'm like, oh yeah, I could crush that, that whole Subway sandwich or whatever like that. And, and you know, I'm going to try that. I'm going to have some of the chips with her like that. Oh, a, a, a too high of a calorie meal will even make me yeah. feel ugh, afterwards. So I've really figured it out. It's like, man, I just had to, I have to have a, a controlled portion size, whole foods, and I feel you, amazing. I would love to speculate with you guys for a second. You brought up Element T. So Element T, for people that know, electrolyte powder, high in sodium, uh, no calories, right? No artificial sweeteners type of deal. And you brought it up because Dr. Tina and other doctors are recommending people use uh, electrolyte powders when they're on GLP ones, because when you cut your calories, especially your carbs, and you're not drinking enough water, uh, you need more sodium, or you're gonna have, you're gonna feel more fatigue, headaches. Uh, you're just not gonna feel good. Mm-hmm. This is true when people go on a keto diet. This is definitely true when people fast. When you fast, add sodium to your water, it makes a big difference. Uh, makes a huge difference. So I'd love to speculate on the following. I'll use an example. <clears throat> There's that old saying that during the gold rush in California. So in California, I don't know how long ago it happened. I already know what you're going to say. There was a gold rush where people came to California looking for gold, yeah. but more millionaires were made and serving the gold rush Yeah, picks people. and shovels. Picks and shovels. Yep. What are some markets, because I can see a company like LMNT as mainstream usage of GLP-1s goes up. Sure. 
start to capitalize because great, people great, need great speculation. Right, hundred percent. I would I would get on board with companies like LMNT. That's I think gonna be massive. I think certain supplements are going to crush. Yeah, I've heard you say already. HMB certain and easily deliverable I, protein hey, yes, snacks. Protein. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say something too that's going to piss off our audience because how hard we were have been on branch chain amino acids. Watch that, <laughs> and I can get behind it now. I know. I can get behind it now. It's irony. Want, it's always so Because here's our argument. What have we always said? If you eat uh, if you eat high protein, it's a waste of time. And on top of that, you even if you have a hard time with your whole foods, you'd still be better off having a scoop of protein powder from right. a shake. Right. Yeah. But for the first time in my life, even getting to a shakedown right. is like, oh my God. Yeah. But, in, but essential amino acids would help offset. So loss. so yeah. having yeah. something like that, especially if you can, you can do both together, right? Like one of the drinks I'll have, I'll have one with branched chain amino acids and sodium, and the other one I'll have sodium. And so right. just the pure element T. So I do think that that's yeah. going to make and HMB. You mentioned HMB is a very, very effective in the context of things that do this. Okay. So nothing's more effective than strength training and eating enough protein. I want to say that again, but HMB <sighs> is excellent at, at uh, preventing muscle uh, breakdown. So giving it to people who are bedridden, giving it to people in nursing homes. And I used to have, so my vegan clients were the ones that I used to have supplement with <clears throat> Essential amino acids and HMB. And the, the vegan clients I had that didn't want to take protein powders, I actually had a few of those where they're like, no, I just want to eat, you know, whatever. I don't want to take protein powders. I'm like, can you please try taking a few of these pills and see what happens? And then they come back and be like, okay, yeah. I feel... I feel much better. So funny that, I mean, that that's, I know, again, people are going to give us shit because it's something that I've been so hard on. We've all been hard on no. for a long There's time. There's some exercises I make fun yeah. of too, but in the right context, well, we they're about great. Electrolytes, like, yeah. you know, a long time ago, it's like, it was a joke, but like not in the context of, you know, yeah. being in this super clean whole foods diet that that's like right. now all of a sudden it's a different animal we're dealing with and, and it's necessary. Yeah, that's right. So, so you're definitely going to hear me say that about branched chain amino acids now because I do see a definite place for it in that situation where in the past mm -hmm. I've been 100% Makes sense in this, in this yeah. situation. Yeah, no, I mean it really, so yesterday too, by the way, for the audience that, that mm -hmm. has been asking stuff like this, like, so I decided to track again, I'm once again, I'm not really trying to go out of my way. Uh, biggest takeaway, I'm still really under on protein. So I, I landed at 137. Wow. This is with your appetite coming back a little yes, bit. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And making sure that every meal was like a wow. like had a protein source or whatever from it. But you know, even with you know, four small meals, uh the protein intake. Like it, it's like hard to eat. Uh, I eat the same amount of chicken thighs as Katrina eats for dinner now. You know what I'm saying? I just don't eat my normal How double. How do you feel about that? <laughs> 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 I mean, she's, she's like, always Ew. been a, she's always been a pretty good eater, anyways, right? Because she trains so that. So <laughs> interesting, she eats a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's um, definitely hard to to yeah. hit my protein, and that was Jessica uh, took one dose. We are now uh, ten days out, so it should have gone away, right? She's still having trouble. It's longer than that, isn't it? Maybe maybe even longer. Maybe twelve days out. It's been way longer. It's than that, it's still hard for her. She's her appetite's coming back. Yeah, but it's, See, I, I told you it's that. Still, Remember it's I still I, low. I, I told you that. Like it has. Like I'm having to like force feed her like shakes and stuff because she started getting dizzy. She's like, I need to eat some food. It was way too strong for her. You yeah, I mean that's go. what. So the two big things uh, critiques I have to the doctors that are prescribing this and and or how people are using it themselves. I see the over application of it, the dosage, right? Yeah. So I think that they're dosing people way too high and generic, right? That because they're going to be hyper responders, like, to, and this is what I what I'm seeing. Although I don't have anything to prove that this is exactly true, I think the healthier you are using this, the more sensitive you are to its effects. The more unhealthy and obese you are, the more you're probably going to need to follow the dosage that the doctors are prescribing. That's what I think. Everybody I think I've heard, why that would be the case. Everybody who, well, I think you're you've done less internal damage, right? You haven't oversaturated as much. Somebody who so was, there's like a there's a relationship between ghrelin, leptin, and in, in, in the GLP one peptide hormone, right? And and your body almost might become resistant. I would imagine. I imagine and so maybe through years of eating like shit, yeah, and and overeating and not yeah. exercising, I would imagine that would mess with leptin and ghrelin levels. Yeah. And their body would like adapt. Resistance is a thing. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and the body would adapt. So I'm imagining that from what I'm hearing, the people that I've heard the most adverse effects from are the healthier people that are taking this. And I think they're they're taking the dose that is more effective for someone who is morbidly obese or even just really obese and that a, a decondition. So that's the thing. And then the second thing I see is like just which is typical, everybody goes after this stuff is too much, too fast, too soon, like exercise wise. You're going, you're crushing your appetite. You're barely feeding the body. 
like to be intense training or running or doing all oh, these God. things. Oh, God. To be doing Terrible things, combination. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. If you, 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 you overtraining on less calories is a lot easier than overtraining on more calories. Yes. Yep. So I think that there's a there's a, a massive over application of intensity and volume in exercise and training. Uh, and then I think that there is also a uh, you know too high of dosage for a lot of people, and there's not enough customization that's happening right now. It sounds like everybody's kind of getting this generic dose yep. across the board. And what I think is the people that have adverse effects just because they went too much. Yeah. And I think if they would have done half the dose or, or like- like that's what it sounds like. You took a low enough. I took even, a very low dose. You didn't even feel it. No. So maybe halfway yeah, there- Yeah, what's the problem with that? I don't, you know, imagine this. Imagine you go, your doc and your doc does, we're just going to start in the super low dose, see how you feel. At, the, at, at worst, it'll take us four or five weeks to ramp you up to find the right dose versus- Oh no! I gave you too much. Now you feel like garbage for two weeks, and you yeah. can't. Yeah, right? and then that you, and then what happens? A lot of people, like the people I've, the, that have said negative things in my DMs, like, "Oh my god, it was terrible. I had all this." It's like you tried it for one week, and you probably had way too much, if, and you had all these adverse effects, and so then now you just like throw throw it out, like it's yeah. not effective or maybe. Interesting. And by the way, like th that that applies to so many things. You know, we said this before. Like, if you had too much vitamin D, you'll feel like shit from it. You know? If you worked out too hard, you would feel like shit. Yeah, I used to do, used to do this. With when I was a terrible trainer. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know I mean? Mean? so maybe the dose is yeah. just is really what a lot of those side effects could that be. Some, some of the some of the people could are be. feeling for that. Dude, I got to tell you guys about a crazy story that I read over the weekend that is true. I looked it up and it's real, and I can't. I, I wanted. I was waiting to tell you guys. It's such a wild story. So there was this woman. I'll get her name, uh, but I have an article on her. But there's this woman that went skydiving. She'd been skydiving many many times before, and she, her parachute failed. So she, oh my god. So. She was, it was a, it was a 15,000 foot jump. She wasn't doing tandem. It was, she was by herself. By herself. Cause she'd done this so many times. Okay. Oh Main parachute fails. God. So she's struggling, panicking, hits the second parachute, fails. <gasps> okay. Hits the ground at full speed, shatters the right side of her body. Just kakush, right? Now the odds of surviving that are like almost zero. She landed on a massive fire ant hill. So she hits the fire ant hill. Shatters the right side of her body, and then the fire ants begin oh stinging God. her. Oh Over God. 200 fire ants bit her. She gets taken to the hospital. She goes, she's in a coma, and the doctors are, they're all, they all think that the reason why she didn't die was that the poison from the fire ants was pumping enough adrenaline in her body Shut your face. to keep her heart beating. They said if she didn't get stung by the fire ants, what? she probably would have died. That's a crazy story. Isn't that crazy? That's now a talk crazy about story. now this woman now, she believes that this was like a gift, like this was a, like this, and she changed her life. She's living a different way. Cause, cause think of the odds. That's like, insane. Think of the odds. Like you fell, you were supposed to die, but you landed on, on a bunch of ants that stung you, but the stings <laughs> kept you alive. Did, did also the, the because it was an ant hill, did it uh, and it had tunnels probably underneath it, did it absorb yes. some of the so fall? So absorb some of her fall, even though she shattered you know, like a <laughs> She's getting, dude, I'm sorry. That's like but, so, a horrible So day. she was conscious, yeah. passed out from the pain of the fire ants. Yeah. That's what she remembered. Wow. And then they take her in coma the whole deal and she survived. I've heard, because wow. I've heard stories of uh, you know that's one some of people who've like passed out or and then survived because their body was just kind of so oh. limp and they were able to like sort of be a little more Absorbed flexible. Yeah, because when you fall and you're conscious of falling, you they, they say that even up. about like car and plane accidents and stuff like that. Oh, like when people pass out behind the wheel? Yes. And then, is that and true? It, yeah, because your body's limp and it just allows it versus being, like you said, in a rigid place. And, and then, then your muscles and, and shit. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that true? We should look that up. That's weird. I don't know. This is all, yeah, anecdotes. I've heard. heard the same thing though before. I know. Right? And so I know. So I did judo as a kid and judo, especially in the first six months, they teach you how to fall because you get thrown. That's part of judo. You just get thrown. Mm -hmm. And the way you don't get hurt with judo is you create a larger surface on the ground. So when you hit the ground, you hit your side or your back, you slap the ground with your arms and your feet trying to, to create absorb a larger it. surface at the point of impact mm -hmm. versus covering yourself up or bowling up, which tends to- That makes sense. Yeah, or post- So it doesn't put arm. all the pressure to one yeah. little spot. It so if you watch a judo fall, they, the they hit the floor mm. with their arm or their legs. It's called a judo, judo fall or Oh, interesting. Fall. I never yeah. noticed that. Yeah. But that yeah. makes total sense. Yeah. And so yeah. I think it's because it's the surface area. I, you know, I, as a kid, I didn't understand it, but as I got older- by the way, doing judo as an adult, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Those tosses don't yeah. feel too good. Okay, it says here, uh, no, it says to brace for impact. Yeah, that's what they're all saying, though. Yeah, they're all uh, saying brace for impact. They're brace all saying brace? Impact. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Because, yeah. Wait, so, wait, oh, I'm going to hit the wall. What if you're drunk, though? 
Well, then, I mean, why why is it always the guy that's driving this drunk that survives and nobody else does? <laughs> I think a lot of them die, bro. I just think we hear about the ones that survive. Uh, yeah, yeah, it must be uh, just some kind of urban. Dude, legend. I'm watching it's this totally show. You just reminded me. I'm watching this show on Netflix. I don't remember the name of it. Where it's an experiment they're doing in a prison. Have you seen the, the commercial? For oh, them? I oh, seen I saw it. The, the guys where they yeah. they let them all be uh, hang out together. Yeah. What's the name of it? Maybe I someone saw. can find it. So, I started to watch it, but I didn't stay with it. It's it's hard to watch because these guys are first of all. This is terrible. Now, I know these guys are terrible. I mean, a lot of them have done terrible crimes, so it's, we're not dealing with, like, the best here. But they're locked up in their cells for 23 hours a day. They're let out once a day, for one hour a day. Ugh. So it's called 23 and 1 is what they're allowed to do. And so the sheriff, it creates this experiment where he says, it's called Unlocked, a jail experiment, where he goes in and he says, all right, guys, I'm going to let you guys out of your cells. You guys are going to be able to move around, do your thing. We're not even going to have guards in here. We're just going to watch you guys on the cameras. Now, if you guys mess up, yeah. you're going back to 23 and 1. But if you guys can make it for six weeks, then we're going to go to the next phase where I'm going to give you guys more freedom, more whatever. Hmm. Because the, I don't know what the term is, but the percentage of these inmates that come back to jail is 50%. Yeah. yeah. So half of them leave and come back. And so he's like, and I was watching this with Jessica and it's like. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the whole sense that you want to have rehabilitation, you know, be able to like. <sighs> Get people to yeah. be a good citizen again uh, back in society. We've also structured the system so weird when it comes to that. I mean, even like because your your credit is screwed, your job history is screwed, all this stuff is like screwed. So it's like so your only choice is to go back. To yeah. Crime. So like to, to rehabilitate is like challenging. I remember when I after I short sold my house when I was in my twenties. And them telling me like, oh yeah, you'll, your credit will just rebound. And like, okay, well, nobody will give you credit to go build it again. Yep. That was like one of the most frustrating things you that I, I'd job. ever experienced. What was, was the first credit card you got? How'd you do that? So I, I got, and I've told the story before. Where, you do like a, like a like a water delivery, bro. I had, there was there was a there was a point where it had, years had gone by already from that. It had hit my credit so hard. I had been banking with Bank of America. I had six figures in their account for a very long time, consistently in that account with multiple accounts. So figured that okay, I should be able to yeah, get. They'll my, see your history. Maybe they'll give me the. Maybe they'll be the first one to give me credit. Dude, they would not even give me a thousand dollar credit card with six figures in there wow. in the account. Isn't that crazy? Really. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I forgot what I, I think I actually, you know what? I, you know how I got yeah, it? You know how originally I rebuilt it? Thank God that we have a very close friend that does financing for cars and he kinked the deal for me to get the, the car oh, done. We won't say his name. Yeah, we won't say exactly his name. Good. He's a very, very good friend exactly of ours. Very good friend of ours. And he obviously he knew I was good for it. So it would never come back and bite him in the ass. And I'm like, dude, you got to get, get me and get a car loan. And so I got a car loan with the intent of just paying building credit. Yeah. Building, and that was why it was because finally I got it, but it would have never happened oh. had he not kinked the deal for me to get it done. And so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I would have eventually got a credit. Then finally, okay. Then Bank of America will give me a little, I think I started that's with crazy. a $500 credit card with yeah. all that money in there. It was like ridiculous. Oh my God. But I mean, that's just an example because they have that screwed too, right? Their credit is screwed. Yeah. They can't go to a job without saying that they were there in prison before. It's like, yeah, they want you to rehabilitate, but then <laughs> nobody wants to take well, a chance terrible. on you. I, I, I'm watching this and a lot of them, like I said, some of them are in there for capital murder. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but that means you, you did a murder or some kind of a crime so bad that you you could potentially get uh, executed. Okay, so these aren't like great people. Nonetheless, locking people up for twenty three hours a day, like what are we doing? Like, are we trying to do anything other than just keep people in there forever? I don't know. And, and I know in California for a while, I don't know if it, if they ever change this. They took the gyms out of the prisons. Mm -hmm. Like one of the best things you could do is is give them an opportunity to work towards something, right? Like you know, I know it's promoted more violent outbursts. Yeah, or you, even have something to take away. Like, yeah. hey, look, you can't go on the prison yard. I mean, this is not yeah. our obviously this is not our field, our expertise, and so that. So I'm sure we'll get criticized sure. for for talking about this or speculating. But I've always I've always thought it was so interesting why we got we get away from like I feel like if I was locked up 23 and one like that, like you would want to work. Like I would be, yes. I would be honored to work for free just to work, just to get out, just to do something. So that's, I was just going to say mm -hmm. that. Imagine if, if, if they were, companies were allowed to hire inmates <laughs> that could do stuff, pay for them, them less than minimum wage. So they actually have an incentive to hire them. Right. But the inmate has now an incentive to work, to build up credit. You know why they wouldn't do that? Because it would be viewed as exploiting, I know. which, which is, it's just know, so funny. dude. It's you got to give them something to look forward to. That's if right. You got nothing to look forward to. Like, of they would do gonna, it for free. I yeah. guarantee you there is a large percentage of them that would do it. But go ahead, pay them money or or make a deal with the state. We, we, we do it so the offshore. state's like, hey, yeah. we'll pay them, 
you know, like half a minimum wage, yeah. the state will get half. They'll or still you get a tax break if you do this. Or yeah, something like or something yeah. like that. It's like to me, I don't understand why. And then also, well, you know what you do? That's the most power in power. You give them purpose. That's mm-hmm. it. They have purpose or something, and it's like. That the value of that and the likelihood that, and then imagine they actually develop a skill. Like imagine if we could, like let, let's say it was editing videos on our time. Like that, we have we have kids that have come into this business that were interns that we taught to do that and now are very good at it. Have yeah. a skill. Like imagine if you had that opportunity to learn a skill like that and then provide it for a company to where I, maybe yeah. you get paid a little bit, maybe you don't. Maybe it just shaves time if you show you do a good job or and maybe the company gets a tax break. I don't know what it looks like structural-wise, but to me it sounds like that would be very beneficial for them. Did you know that they have- And our economy. Yeah, I agree. Did you know that they have programs? Uh, we looked into this. Um, they have programs where you can sign up and you can visit uh, prisoners once a month and you can go and teach something. Obviously, I would teach oh, uh, fitness or whatever where you could go and, and, and just- Yeah, because you know- Especially after watching that show, and even before that, Jessica and I were talking. It's like, you know, um, I, I I feel like people, and I know there's some terrible people out there, so don't don't get me wrong. But I know that I, I feel like a lot of people, most people, maybe all people, have the capacity to turn their lives around. But you know, if you don't give them, at least you, give them the opportunity. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, or yeah. or do something like you know, give them books, give them a gym, give them the opportunity to learn, to work, to grow. Yeah, because watching that, I'm like, I couldn't imagine. Could you imagine being locked in a room for 23 hours no, a day? Dude, torture. For years? Torture. I would turn into a terrible person just from yeah. doing that. I mean, I would almost, personally, I would almost rather have the death penalty. <sighs> I, we talked about that the other day. You know, it would right? drive you mad. I would, oh, yeah. If you told me, Adam, you could be locked up in prison for the rest of your life, 23 hours, one hour a day, get out, or you could take the, an injection and be done with this thing, like, I, I would probably take the ah, injection. That's terrible. Like, I can't, being locked up in a cell would probably be... Have you, have you seen the cells? They're like tiny. Yeah, Mm-mm. it's like this little room, and you're in there all day. And again, day. for the audience that's freaking out, it's, I'm not. I'm not saying that people that do these awful crimes shouldn't be punished 100, but also give them an opportunity to try and rehabilitate, yeah. right? Or, or even create some sort of a system where if you have to really show signs of working towards being a better person in order to right. even have the opportunity to then go work and do things. You know, Arnold used to visit prisons, and I'm uh, pumping Arnie did that. They yeah. used to visit prisons. Johnny they, Cash was big about that too. Really. Like, yeah, really, you know, uh, immersed himself and, and tried to kind of like, you know, bring some positivity in there. I think, yeah, there's just, I mean, there's there's a lot of good people that do things. They make mistakes, you know, yeah. early on. And it's like, you know, we we just kind of lump them all in there together. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, like you said, like provide them with at least like some kind of meritocracy system where it's like they can kind of work their way out of yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I am definitely not advocating for like the laws in San Francisco where it's like, no, you can do whatever you want. Don't go to, no, no, no. You, <laughs> no. Like there needs to be no, laws. There needs to be consequences and I think we've gone away from that, but at the same time. But when you're there, yeah. let's let's see if we, we can We don't want to hold them there for, yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can create opportunities for people to change or contribute or give them some kind of purpose. Otherwise what you're doing is you're just making them worse. And what's the goal here? Do the other countries do stuff like that? Does like does I would think like a communist country like China would do some yeah, shit like that. Do they do, do they do they do that? Do, you know, the structure their government. I know that, that some countries like. have uh, prison systems where you go in there and uh, they 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 trust you a little more. They and they allow you to do certain things. You could work. You, could, you I would think there's got to be some communist country that's been smart enough. I would because they don't give a shit to, about exploiting people. So I would think that they're fine. I would not want to go to jail in a communist country. That's for sure. <laughs> no, I wouldn't yeah. either. But my point is that you, there's got to be some governments that have figured out like, hmm, we've got all we got millions of people in this prison. We may as well of put course. them to, put them to work and the build stuff. Right? Oh, I think they do. Yeah. yeah, they do. They have to. Oh yeah, there has to be. It some. usually involves horrible manual labor yeah, you know, yeah. out in fields and things like that yeah 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 i would think so too like there's got to be some there's got to be countries that be yeah. doing that like, see that's so relative too. is people that do that that aren't prisoners you know and it's like okay well if they're doing the job and then like why is that so bad for them to do that i, I I'm, well, <laughs> well, you know, I'm with you i go home at night. hey listen if i was to, <laughs> even <laughs> even like, bro even oh, shoveling shit and yeah, weed oh, whacking at you. 140 degrees i would rather do that than be in a cell of course 100 yeah. percent. of course we take my shirt off get some sun like oh well we back all day for that like that yeah. to, being in in, yeah. in, a, in in a room yes for 23 Most hours a day you can only read so many books dude. and then and then like fights break out right and yes it's like of course fights are gonna break out if you got a bunch of dudes who already had bad situations probably growing up and whatever and are criminals and all that stuff that's how they handle themselves in life you lock them in a cell for 23 hours a day and then you let them out to eat 
You don't think they're going to get in fights with each other? Bro. I'll be looking for a fight. Yes. That, that, that would be the exactly. most excitement in your day. It would be drama. To, you would be drawn, expand. just like we are drawn to soap operas and drama TV. Yeah. That's their best version of that. Yeah. It's like so angry. You create it within up. there. Totally. Weak yeah, and bored people are the most dangerous. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm telling you. Totally. All right. Look, uh, is do we have tickets left for the live event still? General admission, yes. Okay. VIP is sold out. Mindpumplive.com. We are going to be in Vegas June 15th. You can meet us. It's a live Q&A. Let's a good time. go! At the Bellagio. Hopefully, when this airs, they're still can we talk? Can we talk about that That we're doing that at the same time that with the Dr. Seeds event? Can we talk about that? Uh, I don't know. Doug, can I talk about that? I'm not sure. I'm going to anyways. Okay, so I'll, I'll take the slap. You know, what's that, how's that go? Uh, ask for forgiveness is easier than ask for permission. Yes, I'll just ask yeah. for forgiveness if I was- Well, he to. has an event that's going on where they're going to be covering all kinds of- cool The reason stuff. why- Yeah, the reason why I want to bring it up is because I imagine we have listeners that are very interested in uh, like all the GLP-1 talk we've been doing and peptides and, and all that. And at that same time- Oh, that's the cutting edge. He is holding with the doc, like Dr. Tina is going to be there. You heard us talk about her today. You're going to have all these doctors that are, uh, you know, working with peptides and patients at this huge convention. He's leading it. Sal actually is going to get to do a talk. Uh, there also, and I believe they sell their own tickets somewhere else for that. I don't know if we can. They do. We can give love to that or not. If you want to know, you can email us. I'll tell you what, we can handle it that way, and email our team, and then we can send you guys over there. But yeah, that'll be a bunch of doctors speaking, and that's going to coincide at the Bellagio, and then we're going to have our private event. So you know, possible, possibly you could go to both. Uh, it's going to be events. fun. Ned makes full spectrum hemp oil, high in CBD and other cannabinoids that you actually feel. There's a lot of CBD products out there. I'm sure you've tried them, you've taken it, and then you're like, I don't know if I feel anything. Oh no, you'll feel, Ned. You take it 45 minutes to 60 minutes later, you feel the euphoria, the reduction in pain, you feel good, you feel great, it's great stuff. They have lots of different types of products based on hemp oil. Go check them out, see which one's right for you. Go to helloned.com, that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump, use the code mind pump, get 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Cristiano from California. Hey, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate all the uh, the content and uh, really love the podcast. Um, I kind of have something in common with all you guys. Um, so, Sal, my parents are both immigrants from, from Europe as well. They're both from Portugal. So, I totally understand the feeling of, you know, having friends come over and everyone thinks you're yelling and stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah. you're just having, you know, normal everyday conversations. And then Adam, you know, you're originally from the Central Valley. I'm a Central Valley guy myself and work in agriculture. So, you know, my, my sales territory is up in Oakdale, Modesto and all that ah. stuff. So, yeah, I actually went to uh, Dodge Ridge the other day with some customers. I was thinking, man, Adam probably used to shred this slope, you know, I was 20 years ago. I was a season pass holder there for many years. Gosh, I love that mountain, man. It's awesome. So, and then Justin, I'm super into theory conspiracy stuff as well. So I really appreciate you bringing that onto the show. So, <laughs> All right. It's good deal. That's um, what I bring to the table. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is regarding um, when I bench press, I feel a pain like under my shoulder blade or on the top of my lat. And I haven't really bench pressed in o over a year doing flat bench press specifically um, because of that pain. Ever since you guys dropped that chest master class, I, I think I heard it mentioned there that, you know, maybe incline bench press is better. So I've been doing that and that's been good. I've gotten really strong with my incline bench press. However, you know, I don't like the fact that I'm avoiding a foundational movement and flat bench press because of this pain. So I'm wondering, is it, you know, maybe like a priming issue or a mobility issue? Or, you know, one thing I know for sure is I'm kind of uneven, um, especially my back. Like if I put my back flat against the wall, the right side of my back touches while the left side doesn't i think it's like a muscular imbalance issue Wingy. so i'm kind of wondering how do i go you know through this i guess all right well first let's let's talk about the bench press being a foundational movement it's it, an incline press would be just as foundational yeah, yeah. so it's not an mm -hmm. exercise like a barbell squat where i'm like oh you know let's try not to replace it unless we absolutely have to yeah. uh if you just Don't incline get horizontal pressing that way yeah if you just incline and you never bench press you'd be totally fine I, okay. by the way i almost never flat bench press anymore yeah. i haven't flat bench pressed in yeah. forever yeah, i always yeah. do at least a slight incline or a big incline. it's also a more technical exercise believe it or not than, than an incline uh but as far as your back let's talk about that for a second do you know where that where that came from do you have a back injury a neck injury any nerve uh, damage? No, I guess I have a slight case of scoliosis is what I've been told before. Um, like some of my shoulders are kind of offset. So my left shoulder will sit higher than my right shoulder. I wonder if I can, you know, you can probably see it right here a little oh, bit. Yeah. Oh, um, I so I don't know if it's, uh, 
you know, it's like a whole body imbalance or, or what. Okay. <clears throat> when you're bench pressing, typically if somebody notices pain in the kind of, you know, mid upper back area, it's because one of the shoulders is pulling up while the one, other one is depressing. So when you're bench pressing, you want your shoulder blades back and down. And you want to create length simultaneous. And you want to create length in your spine or length through your head, right? So back and down, and you want your head to be nice and tall, and you want the back of your head on the bench. Another mistake a lot of people make is when they bring the bar down, they'll lift their head up off the bench as they come down to their chest and they'll bring it back down as they press up. That movement in the in the cervical spine can cause problems or exacerbate issues uh, in the neck. So you want to create length in your spine by pressing your head against the bench, not up, don't look up, but rather back, like you're giving yourself a double chin, creating length, and then mm -hmm. pulling your shoulder blades back and down like you're trying to pull them into your, put your, your shoulder blades into your back pockets. And then you could do your bench press. So you're actually activating your lats while you do that. So you could try that out with lighter weight, um, or you could avoid bench press for a while until you start to feel like things balance out a little bit. I understood. Yeah, do you, priming is essential though for this. Like yeah, I, I, yes. I still to this day I have have to prime before bench. Otherwise, I can feel clicking in my shoulder. I get the same kind of issues in my back. Like so, getting and by the that's why the incline bench feels so much better for you. Is it naturally kind of gravity pulls the shoulders kind of back and down. That's why we've always said that we recommend yeah. the incline bench over the flat bench for most people because it it just helps with the form and technique. But you can get in that position in the flat bench, but you it, t it typically takes a, a client some good priming before they go into that to get in that position. Yeah, and to reiterate, kind of uh, because you're you're doing that with the incline bench, you're kind of accounting for that uh, shoulder retraction and, and helping in that direction. But the nodule of the back of your head to really focus on that as being your anchor point there for your head uh, and practice that repeatedly on the wall. So take our, our zone mm -hmm. one wall test and really just keep, you know, that in mind when even at work, whatever, just throw yourself up against the wall, press your, your body into the wall and really focus on that like double chin position. Cause it's not natural for people to get into that and to, you know, repeat that's going to really help a lot. You also should feel better doing dumbbells flat bench than you will barbell <coughs> flat bench. Yeah. So if there's, yeah, nothing, I do feel good doing that. Yeah. So, sure. so there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I, I mean, I love, I love that you are aware of it. You want to try and get to the bottom of it and work with it. But you know, this is an example of like, if you were a client, I'd probably work around it with, you know, you know, not doing a lot of flat bench. When we do flat bench, it would be barbells. And then I would be doing these movements and priming exercises to try. You mean dumbbells? Or yeah, excuse me, yeah. Uh, dumbbells. Well, too, to, to find out your limitations, it'd probably be beneficial for you to run map symmetry and go through like some That's more it. unilateral type training. And just to see like, you know, maybe there's, it's a stability issue. Maybe it's something like, you know, that you just need to kind of focus in on some of those discrepancies and, and imbalances and that, that'll help address and strengthen that. Yeah. Do you have map symmetry, Cristiano? Cause we could send that to you. I think that'd be a great program, especially if you have, if you do have some mild scoliosis. I don't. And man, I would really appreciate that. that I mean, thank you so much. That'd yeah. be awesome. We'll shoot that over. Perfect. Here. Yep. Um, one quick question about the map symmetry program. So I work out in my garage. I kind of have limited equipment. I have a barbell, some of those both like adjustable dumbbells. Um, and a pair of 80 pound dumbbells. Is there any other equipment that I might need nope. for that program? No, you're fine. No, if, you those, if you got adjustable dumbbells, you you're bench, good. You need dumbbells yeah. and yeah, you're, yeah you're fine. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, um, well, yeah, that, that answers my question. I just want to make one more comment specifically to Sal. Yeah. Um, I've been following your, your spiritual conversion recently and I'm really pumped for you going through the RCIA program and, you know, joining the Sacramento life. So I appreciate I've that. been praying for you and, um, I don't know if you've been following Elliot Holst at all recently, but he's re recently had a, you know, a reversion of Catholicism too. So it'd be wow. kind of oh, cool to get you guys conversation. Wow. Yeah. Wow, he's like him. super oh, that's good. Catholic now. Wow. So that's great. Check wow. it out. Yeah. yeah. And keep, keep praying for me. I need all the prayers I can get. That's, that's the yeah. Hey, yeah. you do the same for me as well, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> right on. All right. All right. See you gentlemen. Take Bye. Yeah. The, uh, um, you know, ben a lot of people don't know that, but the bench press is, a very technical exercise. I think a lot of people think of it as like a basic, I, I just press the bar up. It's actually one of the more technical exercises to do properly. Um, if you don't treat it like a, like really like a technique, it's, it's, it's it so become, overlooked. Well, it could become a troublesome movement. I'm going to say something that's controversial. Maybe this will be a viral clip, Andrew, and piss everybody off. Like I think the flat bench is overrated. I think you can do an incline bench and get all the same benefits. Most people will yeah, get into fine. that position better. Yeah, you're fine. Most people benefit actually, even on from an aesthetic 
position of actually building the upper chest yeah. if you want a, a better look in your chest. I think the flat bench is grossly yeah. overrated. Here's what I like about the flat bench. If you learn how to do it properly, it teaches you how to anchor your shoulders and stabilize your shoulder girdle while you press a, a large load or a heavy load. Well, it's a true That's horizontal press, but yeah, I, I can agree with you, Adam, on that. Yep. Like yep. In terms of a value and desired outcome. Totally. Our next our next caller is Wyatt from Utah. What's well, up, Wyatt? How can well, we help Wyatt. you? What's up, buddy? Good. How are you guys? Good, good. good. This is crazy. You guys, this is, I listen to you guys so much and the, this is co so cool. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, I guess, first of all, um, again, thank you guys for uh, all the stuff you guys have been talking about, um, especially the dad stuff. I find that super motivational and super inspirational. Um, and I'm excited to be a dad because I'm 26, I'm married and we don't have any kids yet, but when that comes to the point I, that'll be fun and i want to be like you guys and be fit cool dads so, <laughs> thank you um uh i guess to get some of the other stuff out of the road um i'm 237 pounds i'm 511 um i've been working out for a long time ever since high school i played a little bit of sports and um but i've been seriously lifting for four years and um and before that i got to my heaviest at the start of COVID at 240 pounds. Um, I feel like I have a lot of muscle. I feel really strong, um, but I haven't really gained or lost weight or really changed shape. Um, and so I kind of have two questions with this. Um, so I have, I've done a DEXA scan and I'm at 19% body fat and, um, I know that I'm, I know I'm really strong. I could bench 315 pounds. Um, but I'd really like to be in the low 10%, um, and to like, just look better in my body. And then, um, I know you guys always arc on everybody about eating more protein and trying to gain your metabolism and to try to boost that with eating more protein. And so I've been trying to do that. I, on good days, I feel like I hit 190 grams of protein. And so I'm struggling on, I know I need to eat more, even more than what I need. Um, and, but should my progress feel this slow? And then, uh, the other thing is, um, recently finances have been kind of hard. I'm a poor college student. I'm working on my second degree, um, and trying to afford all of that food is really hard. Um, and so I don't know if you guys have any more advice and I guess another question with that, is it okay to use like the Walmart no name brand of protein? Cause that's what I can afford. So, yeah, good. Yep. <clears throat> good question. So, uh, chicken, chances, thigh, chicken thighs, ground beef, rice, sweet potatoes yeah. live off of that. All, all, all bulk. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. You can buy all that stuff in bulk. Yep. Um, ground and, beef. Yeah. Ground, yeah. ground beef, ground beef, chicken thighs, rice, sweet potatoes, cottage cheese, milk. If you can have and, dairy and, and go, go buy in bulk. Eggs. And you could, you could really, li yeah, eggs. Eggs. you could live off of those things. And you just yeah. buy in bulk and you just prep your food over the week. And it's like, you'll save money. And actually. if you, and, and considering that okay. our goal is to lean out and kind of get shredded here, uh, yeah. it's so you're going to be yeah. okay eating low calorie, but the key, the goal will be to hit protein. So that's going to be essential is that hitting that protein intake using those foods that I just sent over or just said over, said to you. Uh, and it's okay if you're lower on calorie, it's, it, but hit that protein, just make sure you're hitting that okay. uh, and focusing on and being consistent with it. Because if you're saying on a good day, you're only getting one ninety, and then a bad day, let's say is 90. And, and that happens more, more often than the other way. Uh, you're, you're, you know, we're going to, we're going to pare down muscle along the way. Now you're a big, a big strong dude so you know if we lost five pounds of muscle along the way of losing 20 pounds of fat that's an okay ratio but you want to obviously hold on to as much muscle as you can in the process and so it's going to be essential that you're hitting that protein intake while you're dieting 10 10 percent body fat your current body weight if you were not to lose any lean body mass would probably put you in the 190 something range um so okay. 190 something is would be the aim so that's the um, grams of protein that I would hit every day because you want to hit your 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 target body weight in grams of protein. Now the only challenge here, Wyatt, is that you're not tracking, so you're kind of guessing. We don't know how many calories you're consuming. We don't know yeah what your maintenance is. So I can't tell you what direction to go. Um, you know, in terms of trying to get leaner. 
The best thing you do is track, okay. start tracking. At least the protein. Uh, uh, yeah, tra just track, see where you're at, and then that'll give you a good idea where you need to go when you start to cut. Um, hit your protein mm. targets, go about 500 calories below what you've discovered to be your maintenance, and then you'll okay. slowly get there. What program of ours are you following to, Wyatt? <laughs> Uh, I'm not following any, um, I really wish I could, um, that's been part of the problem with just money and stuff. I haven't been able to afford any. Well, we'll take um, care of that. For yeah. you. We'll take care of that for you today. But so tell me, give me a little bit of, a, uh, give me a little bit of an idea of what your, your lifting routine looks like right now. How many days a week? What is it like a so, split? Is it a full body? What's give me an idea. It's, I don't really know what to call it. Um, it may be more for the split. Um, so I do four days a week. Um, I hit chest and back on one day or on like Monday and then legs and shoulders the next day and then rest usually or like try to stretch and stuff like that and then do the same thing again. So, okay. Yeah. So you maps can, anabolic. Yeah. Anabolic maps anabolic. Do the, change do the three day a week version and the trigger sessions on the off days. That'll be a great program for you. So we'll send maps anabolic okay. to you. Follow, oh. eat, <laughs> eat off, Thanks, eat, guys. eat those foods that we're talking about Here, right now. Here's what you're going to find. When you buy those foods in bulk, you know, you go to Walmart or Costco mm -hmm. or wherever and you buy ground beef, chicken thighs, white rice, uh, you buy sweet potatoes, frozen vegetables, uh, you'll save money. Yeah. It's actually not that expensive yeah. on a serve, per serving basis. Mm -hmm. As far as the protein okay. powders uh, are concerned... I mean, the Walmart brands are fine or whatever, but I would only use that for convenience or if it's really hard to hit your protein targets. You should be able to do this with, with food. You should totally, as long as you prep. Here, the, the key here is going to be prep because if you don't okay. prep your meals, you know, at the beginning of the week or twice a week, then you're going to be really, it's going to be really hard to, to hit your calorie targets and your protein targets. You're going to buy food that is more expensive because you're going to eat out and stuff like that. And then it's going to kind of dip into your finances. So win the weekends, bro. Yeah. Win, yeah. win the weekends. That's going to be. Yeah. No. That, meanwhile, I've, I've talked to her about this idea and we've been trying to do that. So um, it's just sometimes like, yeah, this is last weekend we went camping. And so it was kind of hard to like sure. hit that. But so. yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. If you can tolerate dairy to, you know, add that, you know, whole glass of milk. Uh, with your meals, that's another good way. Yeah, okay. milk and cottage cheese are great. Yeah. Cottage cheese is a great okay. high protein snack. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I love to. I love to hear back from you after about 30, 60 days. I think you're if you follow what we're saying right now, you follow anabolic, you eat off that list, and you know hit that protein intake. You should see a pretty significant difference, even in yeah. a month's time. Yeah, but your size, you know, get down to like you know, even if you got down to twelve percent body fat, I think you'd be really, really happy with how you look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I 10% was like max goal. I just, I would love to be in the low teens. I think, I think that would be the best. So, yeah, you'll, 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 it'll, it'll happen. It'll, you'll go about a half percent a week uh, of, of fat loss okay. if you're good, maybe a percent a week if you're really crushing and consistent. So it's there. It's totally there. Okay. All right, man. All right, Wyatt. Cool. You're all set up, man. Thanks awesome. Calling, brother. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much. Thank right you. On, yeah, there's a, such a, a misconception that eating healthy is more expensive. And, and and I understand why. You go to healthy restaurants, yes. Well, it's you eat whole foods, you know, it's, right. it's a, a bit over exaggerated. Right. Or they place what you need. Yeah, they place so much value on, you know, like this food is sourced from this special farm where the the cows are massaged and you know, they got monks well, preying on. It's like you know, really, like like the basics, the bare bones. Yeah. The basics in bulk are not are, are actually less expensive than almost anything else you do. And there's also a hierarchy <laughs> to how you decide whether you're going to eat organic or not. We've talked about this before. Yep. Yeah. Like I know that we put so much emphasis in the benefits of that, and we and I stand by that, right? But if I had, if I'm literally that tight financially, uh, you making healthy choices it's that better. are not organic is better than you, you know. Eating at McDonald's because you right. can get ninety ni yeah ninety nine cent burgers or whatever like that like that's not a better choice. Uh, I mean, you're better off just getting chicken breasts that aren't organic. I will say this though, organic now has gotten so close well, to the butcher price box. Of, well, not just I mean butcher box, but like Costco, Walmart, they all have organic They've sections the now. Price yeah. a lot, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you do the math on like, butcher box, grass fed beef, their chicken, all that they have, yeah, every, all the meats you need. Yeah, you're good. And yep. honestly, that would be a great. I mean, we didn't recommend it to him on this. Hopefully, he'll listen to this. Like, that's a great investment mm -hmm. is to have that. And then it's something that it does for me. I don't know about you guys, yeah. but. It, it's it's actually kind of like an accountability piece, right? I'm paying for this thing to come in every single month. Oh, you got to eat it. Yeah. yeah, when it gets there, I got to eat it. And so it's like, oh, I need, let's cook this. Let's And then it makes me bulk cook. And so it, to me, I've liked 
that versus yeah. like, you know, it's waiting. It's super to, convenient because it's there waiting for you. Right, right. Our next caller is Joe from Florida. What's up, Joe? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, you know, it's kind of surreal to be here. And uh, you, you dudes are rad. And I know you guys get that a lot. So I'll leave it at that. But really appreciate <laughs> yeah. what you do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, dude. So uh, I think I'll start off with a question and then kind of just go into the background, if that's okay by you guys. Yep. Sure. So my question is, what are the best exercise programs to do at nighttime where I can still see gains or at least maintain muscle while also mitigating disrupting sleep? And then the other part to that is, what is the best approach for nutrition as far as what to eat and the timing of last meal? So the complication of this is, I became a father for the first time a little under two years ago. And as you guys know, that really disrupts all schedules. So what I used to do is I would get up around seven o'clock in the morning. I would do my breath work, going into reading my book for 30, 45 minutes in the cold shower, into the gym, come back, eat and uh, head into work. Now, basically because of my daughter and what I do for a living, I'm a chef. And let's just say my, my average hours are 12 hours a day. So I'm leaving at work at, you know, like 10, 11 in the morning and get back 10, 11 at night. The, the morning time is now reserved for my daughter because I don't want to be an absent father. Right. So what that's done on the days that I work, it's pushed my, my gym time at night because also not going to the gym is not an option for me. So I just want to know your guys' opinion on if there's a best approach, what to do. I have kind of like pulled back instead of going five to six days a week now, really just focusing on four. The The two days that I'm off are pretty normal times, but it's really just about figuring out the, the five day work week. Did, okay. So you do have, you do have two days off of work. I will eventually get into that, that opening <laughs> up a restaurant right now. I'm kind of could be working six to seven for a bit, but okay. let's just say, you know, two to three months from now. Yeah. So we got, I, we got I, a, we got a program for him. We got massive team. They're done. Yeah, yeah, I, I had a I had a custom idea to, for him because he has the two days off that he could also do too, and then it gives him a little bit of flexible. He could run like a this would be like a a blend of Maps anabolic with Maps fifteen. Maps fifteen would be like the cornerstone of what I would do, but because you have two days off, it might work that you have. I don't know if you have access at home or you have a gym close by to the house, but like a one full body workout uh, on one of the off days, and then the rest of the week you're doing these micro workouts, which is basically Maps fifteen, where you're just doing one to two exercises a day. It should only take you fifteen to twenty minutes to get it done. And, you know, you could either insert that into a lunch break somewhere or you could do it right when you finish work, like you're saying, uh, but isn't taking that much time uh, out of the day. And you'd be surprised uh, how how much you can get out of that with these micro workouts. Um, so that would be either max 15 the way it's laid out or a full body day on, you know, Sunday or Saturday or whatever day you have off consistently. And then like these little micro workouts during the week. What do you think? I think, I think just Matt, I mean, yeah, that's good. I mean, maps 15 right now is the way to go. It's two, it's going to be two exercises a day. So you'll be in and out of the gym in 20 okay. minutes uh, and that would be perfect. Or you could do the option with the suspension trainer that you can keep at home. Um, and then it's even okay. faster. That would, that would be great. And it actually, look, it, it's not just preventing, you know, a loss of gains. I, I hit PRs following a program like that. So it's really, really effective. Now, diet wise, your other question was like when you should eat, uh, are, are you able to eat while you're working or is that not a thing? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm the chef of the place. So it's like, I actually, I think that's my advantage where I get to eat a lot more variety of food than say the normal person as well. Off um, I'm plate. pretty keen on that as well. Like yeah, and it's part of the concept. Of, yeah, I'll everybody's play. Yeah, exactly. They just wait for it to come back. Um, yeah. Or you throw it away. You, you don't know the secret to the restaurant. That's what happens to all your guys' dishes when it comes back. Right down the um, Maybe before, maybe before too. Yeah. Um, no, just oh, kidding. No. Um, so, <laughs> so I do have that. You know the the variety because seasonality with the menu, and we like to change it often. But I am also part of the concept for the restaurant is good tasting food should be good for you. So I am. You know, I went back. I got my functional nutrition certification from Mind Body Green. So it, it's a big concept of of eating and having like the holistic everything together for me as well. I love that. Nice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So so what was your question around diet then? Was it just uh, was it digestion so, issues yeah. you're noticing at night? Is that what's well, bringing this? No, I don't, I don't really have any. It's more about your opinion of like the timing of the last meal, because I don't want to eat too much, like too close to my actual bedtime. Cause it should be the two to three hours 
yeah. uh, before. Yep. But Ideally, it's also yeah. like, you know, whether what what are your beliefs on like should it be more protein driven because of the late workout? Should it be more carbohydrate? Like, Don't what worry. do you think? It's it's not a big deal. It's no. not if you're eating a good, healthy, balanced diet and you're not eating in this massive surplus, yeah. it's it's less important. You could eat all day, stop at five PM and not eat again to the next day, have your evening workouts, you'll be fine. Okay, great. Because yeah. yeah. I do like to do the time restrictive eating as well. So I think that'll yeah. play into it. Yeah, you're totally fine yeah. with the diet. Yeah. But MAPS 15, that is the program for you, especially being a new dad. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'll check that out. We'll, it, we'll send it over to you. You want to do a shout out for your restaurant or what? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're opening up at the Moor in Miami. So it's a, a historical, site, uh, historical site from 1922, and it's getting completely revamped right now. And I would love you guys, if you're ever down here, you know, hit me up and would love to have you in and take care of you. Awesome. What, what's it called? Great. What's the name of the restaurant? So the Moor is the, more. the, the uh, Elastica is the name of the restaurant. Okay, it's okay. based off of a, a famous sculpture from uh, Zahid. Awesome. And basically it's in the Moor, in the Moor building. Awesome. 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 As long as you have a kid's menu for Justin, we'll be set. <laughs> yeah. You got chicken nuggets <laughs> in there, man. And crayons. We'll, we'll look you up when we get out there. <laughs> Appreciate that, guys. All right, Joe. Thanks, dude. Thank you. <laughs> Got any juice boxes in there? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. I'll have, some, I'll have some ketchup and chicken nuggets. For, do you have the dinosaur ones? I'm more cultured. It's than like that. a five star restaurant, <laughs> white tablecloths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chicken nuggets. It's a little, little color and crown. I'll get a little like napkin in my Yeah, yeah. no, that's, uh, you know, it's actually an easy question to answer. Uh, you know, Mass 15 for parents, for new parents, is like the perfect program. I wish. Uh, I knew that, you know. Wish you came up ago. with it a long time ago. Look, well, yeah, remember, it wasn't the intent. I did it when I first had Max, and I was like, "This was awesome." That's right. Yeah, I that's remember, right. like, this intentionally. Like, we yeah, 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 yeah. No, right. it wasn't even like it wasn't like created like for dads initially. But I remember doing it, being like, and telling you guys, like, dude, I'm feeling yeah, strong. Feel great. Yeah. <laughs> Our next caller is Rose from New Jersey. Hi, Rose. How can we help you? How you doing, Rose? Hi. It's such an honor to be able to call in and see you all. I've been a long time listener, first time caller which means that I probably should know the answer to my question, but I asked it anyway because <laughs> I just wanted to talk to you all. Um, no so we'll thanks, for, ta it for, you. thanks for taking my call. Let's hear it. Let's hear Perfect. it. Okay. So I'm 39 years old, 5'1", around 130 pounds. Um, this year I'm turning 40 and I'm wondering what's next for my fitness journey. So in my 20s, I focused primarily on cardio, long distance running, dance classes. Um, then I sort of transitioned in the early 30s into sort of a beach body phase that many folks have gone through. And then at age 35, I started doing CrossFit. Uh, my, current gym, my current gym, which I've been at since 2020, it's a little bit more focused on, I would say, functional fitness. So built-in rest, single leg lateral movements, that sort of thing. So it's not as intense as your typical CrossFit experience. And I go to class about five to six times a week. I have a desk job, so I'm mostly sedentary. I do try to get 10,000 steps a day with some running and walking. I try to do gymnastics one to two times a week and mobility 15 minutes. That's probably more like three times a week. So I, I feel like I've been in a rut for several months, even though I've made progress on my lifts, I really don't feel motivated or excited. I'm very competitive, and when the workouts at my gym aren't physically challenging me internally, I feel this sort of emptiness, and this is probably a good time to mention that um, I started a new job about a year and a half ago, and it's been a, a pretty stressful adjustment, so I've been working to create some more balance, uh, sleep seven hours a night, reduce screen time, et cetera. So body composition-wise, I'm, I'm okay with my physique. I feel strong, though I do wish I could lower my body fat slightly. Um, but sometimes, given the stress of the job, I, I don't feel like I have the energy to go on a diet. Um, I just don't feel like I can mentally do both at the same time. I've listened to your podcast for five years, so I know a focus on strength training might be ideal, especially as I grow older. And as I'm reading this email, I can hear you sort of saying that I might be over-exercising or burnout. <laughs> um, but, but, no, I, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I think I think I'm I'm I, I'm challenged because I don't know how to mentally get myself into that way of thinking. Yeah. Um, I dab I dabbled in maps performance for a few months, um, but I don't think I gave it enough time to really click. And uh, strength training doesn't feel as competitive to me as a uh, sort of functional fitness, though I, I know it could be. So basically, uh, how do I get out of this rut? What do I do next? I have Thoughts? I have three different options and ideas, but they all I think would be fun. So I'm curious if the guys will learn that. I see the our maps forty as a would be a good option for you. 
I think maps power lift for the competitive side of you would be a good option for you. And maps old time old time would be an awesome thinking. one because that's so unique and different. And then that competitive learning something new, different, uh, would be fun. So all three of those I could see as a valuable direction for you to currently go right now. And I do want to comment on what you said, because I, you are spot on. I think we would all agree that you're probably doing more than what's necessary. Uh, and part of the kind of burnt out feeling that you have right now is that you've got a lot on your plate, new job, working out five to six times a week. And you're, it's not like you're doing <clears throat> running some other stuff too. Mm -hmm. So that is a lot, uh, and, and not necessary for you to feel your healthiest and be your healthiest and strongest and leanest and fittest. So, um, that's the direction I would go. I'm curious what you guys think. Are you, uh, is all the strength training you're doing in the class format? Mostly, but I do do some extra lifts outside maybe once a week to work on like my bench press, my strict press, because my upper body strength is not as strong as my lower body strength. Okay. Generally speaking, I would stop doing the classes and I would do traditional strength training. And if you like the guidance, you like having a coach, um, if it's feasible for you, you would get so much better results by hiring a, a really good personal trainer. If you could hire a really good strength trainer, and conditioning coach, like a good personal trainer who understands traditional strength training, follow one of our programs, or if they're really good, they could individualize it and train you according to your body. You wouldn't have to, you probably wouldn't have to change anything else. I don't think you'd even have to change your diet. I think you would just notice body composition changes and strength and, and, uh, and muscle changes just from going from a class format to the classes are so inferior to individualized training. They're not even the same universe. Classes can be better than nothing, depending on who's teaching it and how big or small the class is. But individualized training is like, uh, it is so different in terms of results. Like if I had, when I get clients who train in classes and then they just train with me, it was like body transformation time. It was, it was, and it was very rapid. So that's where I would, I would, if it's feasible, yeah. hire yourself a good trainer who understands traditional strength training. I like right. the coach angle mainly for, um, I could, I could just foresee like this uncomfortable, um, feeling when you're in a rest period, uh, and to have, you know, somebody there kind of reining you back, uh, in, in terms of like allowing, uh, it to be purely <clears throat> strength focused and not turn it into a circuit and not turn it into a competitive thing. Um, that would be a complete change. And so what you're looking for right now, you're in a rut, right? You're, you're in a plateau. Your body hasn't really seen significant changes in a bit. Um, what you need to do is change that. And so the change part of it is that's the complete opposite shift for you. And if you can actually, you know, turn that in, in your mind and you can, you can place yourself in that direction, it's going to massively benefit your body. I do like old time when you get it back into that competitive spirit, because um, you're, you're going to find that just building, developing <clears throat> the skill itself, and you can monitor the intensity of that a lot more appropriately um, it, you're going to really geek out on that if you're into that sort of thing and, and being competitive with yourself because it's all built in there. Have you, have you, is there, are there good trainers where you go to take classes? Do they offer one on one training? Uh, that is an option. Yeah. What I could do that. I think, uh, go ahead. What kind of a gym is it and, and how it's big are the groups? It's CrossFit. Is it still a CrossFit? It's, it's a CrossFit affiliate, but I do think it's more functional fitness. So there's maybe 10 people in a class. 10. Okay. So yeah, I, I yeah. yeah, I would go one on one with a, a a good resistance training coach and tell them when you find someone, I want to do traditional strength training and your body will change so remarkably from doing that from what you're going from what you're doing now to that you'll be blown away at how, 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 how much your body changes. But you got to stick it through though, right? She already has yeah. attempted performance and then, and so. You but having that trainer might be it, right? That yeah. might give you the, the kind of the guidance and motivation that you're looking for. <clears throat> Yeah, because I think the part that's hard is that I do like the group camaraderie sure. of the class environment. And so when I've lifted on my own, I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm missing that element. But I, that's also the element that makes me very competitive yeah. is seeing what other people are doing. Yeah, what, sure. Once you work with a trainer one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I have a lot of experience with people who went from that kind of group training to working with me. And that, and that they all told me that. I love the group atmosphere. I love the uh, camaraderie. But once they train with me for a couple months, they, they never went back. Oh, well, I'll tell you right now, if you find a coach, not even at Sal's level, but a good trainer and coach, uh, the same thing that feeds your soul with the with the groups, you're going to get that in a relationship with the coach and some because 
the level of learning uh, along the way, the process of yeah. about your, your body. body's going to feel better too. Yeah. It's impossible to individualize a workout and really make it effective when I'm training, you know, three people, let alone 10 people in a class. The best I can do is walk around, make sure nobody hurts themselves, but the programming is, is it's impossible to do so. So uh, working with a really good trainer who can watch your technique, watch your form, modify the exercises, get feedback, educate you while you're resting. When you're asking questions, here's the challenge. Here's what I'm feeling. Here's what's going on. It's like night and day. And then that experience is going to change your relationship to exercise tremendously. The fact that you've already been consistent mm -hmm. and you're saying like, what's the next phase? This is 100. This is totally yeah. the next phase. Yep. I had a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for confirming. <laughs> you got it. I appreciate it. We'll send Thank you, you. We'll send you one of the programs that we mentioned. So you'll have one there. But hire, hire a trainer. Even if you just do it for a few months, it'll blow your mind. And when you hire them, uh, ask them if they'll take you through that program. Hopefully, uh, the show's big enough that you can find a gym that has a trainer that actually listens to the show. Then you'll feel really confident about that they they align with our values and the way we coach and, and coach people. So I would even I would go find my local big box gym and uh, ask, you know, any of you guys listen to Mind Pump and I want to run one of their programs and hire that trainer. Totally. Perfect. All right. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. it. It's going to be awesome. Thank All you. right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I was still training people when CrossFit started to explode and I got clients, uh, from CrossFit in every single uh, one of them. Our gym was about, right next to the CrossFit gym. And oh that yeah. was like half my clientele. Bro, within, 30 to 60 days, they were all completely converted. Oh my God, this feels so different. Oh my God, this is so much better. Did you see the study that somebody shared in our forum? Because they're defending CrossFit, of course, that in a PubMed that talked about that the injury rate in CrossFit is no higher than in the tr traditional gym. And I didn't address it yet. I wanted to bring it up on the show. In fact, I do want to talk about it. Maybe Doug could put a note to talk about this. Because I already can tell you what the fuck's I, going on. So right? I already know what's mm -hmm. going on, what too, which, which is why I want to talk about it. But because, that's nothing to brag about. Yeah. Hey, there, well, there's also nothing a, to brag about. a study promoted in the CrossFit Journal. I, I would no, imagine. no, it's a PubMed. It no, was a it was a PubMed study, but it doesn't matter because most of your clients, okay, they don't get hurt bench pressing or squatting. That's not what it, it's chronic pain that causes them to stop doing something like that. Yeah. So if the it's, report it's overlooking is the signals. oh, I hurt my shoulder, I yeah. hurt my back lifting and some of that, and the same amount happens, of course. In Listen, lift. if you're getting, and we'll talk about this, but I'll say it here too. If you are getting instructed by somebody and your injury rate is the same as if you worked out on your own strength training in the gym, that's a terrible yeah, program. That's not a good metric. Compare it to personal trainers one on one to group training, and you'd see a vast difference. Yeah. That's the comparison. Yeah. Look, if you like the show, we have free guides that we offer people that can help them with all kinds of things. We have a free peptide guide. Look, you've probably heard of peptides. Semaglutide is one of them. Terzepatide, these are brand names, Ozempic, whatever. Those are peptides. There's peptides that raise growth hormone, build muscle, speed up recovery. We have a free peptide guide. It costs nothing. You can find it at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpmedia. And you can find Adam at mindpumpadam. Adam. 